Doc, nag-start po ako mag-low carb. Tumaas po yung cholesterol ko. Ano pong dapat kong gawin? Ito po si Dr. Iris from Level Up with Dr. Iris. Dito sa channel natin, pinag-uusapan natin two things. Level up sa health, level up sa wealth. Today, pag-usapan natin isa sa mga most common concerns na nakikita natin sa ating mga followers, yung mga patients, even my own patients. Ano po ba ang gagawin kung tumaas yung cholesterol pag-start ng low-carb and fasting lifestyle? So, kailangan natin maintindihan muna uh, before anything else yung role ni cholesterol para sa ano ba siya and ano-ano nga ba yung mga levels, ano-ano yung mga iba't ibang uri ng cholesterol na tinitingnan natin sa ating dugo and should we be concerned about them? So, unang-una cholesterol. Ano nga ba yung cholesterol? It's a compound. It is an ingredient na kailangan ng katawan natin para magawa ang iba't ibang materials. So, number one, yung covering ng ating cell. So, yung membranes po ng ating cells are made from cholesterol. Then, ang isa pa niyang importanteng trabaho is it is important in the synthesis of certain hormones. So, marami po tayong mga hormones. Ito yung mga chemical signals ng katawan natin na nagdudulot ng pagbabago and many of these hormones rely on cholesterol para sila ay magawa. So, these are the stress hormones. Andiyan yung ating mga sex hormones. So, kailangan po siya para dito sa signaling pathways na ito. And then also, cholesterol is important in the synthesis ng mga bile acids. Ito yung nag allow para ma-absorb natin yung fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin A, D, E, and K. Kung wala ito, may hirapang mag-absorb yung katawan ng fat-soluble vitamins. And then finally, ito ay covering din para sa ating mga nerve cells. So, it, it's part of the myelin sheath, yung covering ng ating mga nerve cells po. So, these are the, the various uh, important uh, roles na, na meron si cholesterol. It is uh, a raw material na kailangan para sa paggawa ng mga importanteng structures na yon. Ngayon, yung cholesterol panel, so the lipid profile na nakikita natin in order ng mga doctors natin, is composed of a few different things. Nandyan yung total cholesterol, andyan yung HDL cholesterol, so that's the high density lipoprotein, and then nandyan yung LDL, low density lipoprotein, and then nandyan din yung triglycerides. So, isa-isahin natin yan. The total cholesterol is the summation. So, siya yung suma total nung lahat ng mga cholesterols sa katawan natin. HDL, siya yung tinatawag, most of the time it's known as the good cholesterol. And LDL, so low de density lipoprotein, is the bad cholesterol. But in reality, there's no such thing as good or bad. They're fluid. Nagbabago-bago yung mga structures nila. What they are is they are actually the carriers. Sila yung taga-transport ng cholesterol sa katawan natin. So, pag mataas yung, for example, HDL, alam natin na it reflects carrying more cholesterol but not the dangerous kind. Kaya nga, good cholesterol siya kasi it's been known not to really cause yung heart disease. Ngayon, yun namang LDL, kaya siya nataguri ang bad kasi siya yung correlated doon sa pagtaas ng risk of getting cardiovascular disease. However, ang kailangan maintindihan kay LDL is, LDL also has subtypes. Subtype niya is, there, there's the big particle, so LDL-C, and then there's the small particle, LDL-P. Ngayon, yung nagko-cause ng sakit, nagba, nakakapagpabara ng ugat natin and causes higher uh, cardiovascular risk is yung LDL-P, the small particles. Bakit? Kasi yung small particles stay longer in the bloodstream. And dahil dyan, when it stays longer there, it's more prone to interacting with other uh, substances and processes. So, yung oxidation ang nangyayari, oxidative stress, and then sometimes yung pagkukumpul-kumpul ng cells natin can cause yung inflammation na later on nagiging plaque yung pagbabara ng ugat. So, it's LDLP that does that, not the LDLC. And then finally, yung last component is triglycerides. Ito talaga yung dapat nating tignan in terms of metabolism dahil it reflects the state of insulin resistance. Pag mataas si triglycerides, we know that we are taking too much of things like carbs, high nut carb food, maybe things that are high in fructose or yung synthetic uh, kind of fructose which is high fructose corn syrup, matatagpuan sa mga processed food na mainly junk food, right? Mga sweeteners, mga ganyan. So, triglycerides, very, very important marker. Ito, kailangan ito mababa. Dahil pag mataas ito, for sure, the metabolism is 
not that great. So, yun yung mga iba't ibang components niya. Ngayon, bakit ba nangyayari na tumataas yung cholesterol sa ibang tao? Not everyone will get the elevation. There are, you know, around, they say in the literature, 5 to 25% of people will get this elevation. And itong pagtaas na ito um, to the point na it's dangerous for their health. Marami kasing factors po yan. There, there are genetic factors, you know, correlated to that. There's the genetic, yung unique physiology ng tao na yon. And in those subsets ng population, yes, yung pag-elevate ng kanilang cholesterol will cause a higher cardiovascular risk. Kaya kailangan yung mga yon, they will have to vary. Kahit yung paglo-low carb nila, maaari nilang baguhin such that karamihan ng kanila, for example, na fat sources will come from yung mga monounsaturated, polyunsaturated, mainly from plants and uh, yung mga fish-based po, ano? as compared to animals. Pero ito yung subset lang ng population. For the vast majority, yung karamihan po, the 75 to 95 percent ng mga tao na magkakaroon ng transient elevation ng cholesterol, hindi dapat mangamba. Kasi ang tumataas usually dyan is the HDL. So remember, this is the good cholesterol. And pag tumaas si HDL, tataas din si total cholesterol. Pero ang importante makita, kumusta si LDL? Kung si LDL mababa, at saka si triglycerides lalo na ay normal, there's no need to worry. Ngayon, sa mga kaso naman na tumaas nga si LDL, kailangan natin alamin, alin dun sa dalawang subtypes? Is it the LDL-P, yung small particles ba, or ano lang siya, yung big particles lang? Dahil kung LDL-P ay normal, then there's nothing to worry about. Kasi yung tumaas na LDL component niya, the LDL-C, the big particle, is not going to increase cardiovascular risk. So, kung walang LDLP sa inyong lugar, kung saan man po kayo naroon, then the other way to test this is APOB. APOB. Kailangan ko usapin yung doctor. So, the moment you get your lipid profile, and the thing is, not all doctors know about this, obviously, too, right? So, pwedeng kausapin nyo sila and sabihin na, Doc, pwede po ba tayong magpa-test nung subparticles ng LDL. Maari po bang itest yung LDLP o kaya APOB? Gusto ko lang po kasi malaman do kung itong pagtaas ng LDL ko ay ikakaworry ko. But then again, having said that, not all uh, practitioners obviously know about this as well. Kung hindi naman sila nagpa-practice ng uh, low-carb fasting as a strategy to help the patients na baguhin yung or reverse yung mga medical conditions, they wouldn't probably know about this. Yung iba baka sabihin pa, mas may alam ka pa sa akin, which is a very common scenario. But just have that conversation. Try to attempt, you know, na magsabi dun sa doctor ninyo kung pwede itong order in. And once you know na normal ito, there's nothing to worry about. Okay? Of course, kailangan normal din yung mga ibang parameters. Specifically si triglycerides. Triglycerides, always a marker for metabolism dysregulation. Kapag hindi maayos ang triglycerides, ibig sabihin, you're more prone to getting that insulin-resistant state. You're more prone to having increased cardiovascular risk. So, kapag normal si trigly, and then normal din si LDL, si HDL lang ang mataas, saka total cholesterol, nothing to worry about. And even if, kung mataas nga, si LDL particle and APOB, okay lang yon. You can vary your lifestyle, yung uri ng fats that you're consuming, you can probably decrease as well yung inyong net carb allowance. Uh, just play around with it and find your your best fit. And kung naman si LDLP talaga yung mataas or APOB ay mataas, you can always go to the subtypes of this diet. So you can try the low-carb Mediterranean type of fusion diet kung saan mainly made from you know, like polyunsaturated, monounsaturated fat, mainly coming from plants and fish, yung inyong magiging source of fat para bumaba lalo yung cholesterol. And you can also incorporate things like movement, regular movement to improve, further improve yung inyong metabolic health. So, ito lang po ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon. Sana nakatulong ito. Very common question itong pagtaas ni cholesterol. Sana naliwanagan tayo dito ng konti. And if you have further questions, please join our groups. So, join ka sa group natin, di, nandyan sa baba yung link. If you need the food guide, it will be found sa levelupwithdriris.com. So, I'll see you again soon po. Level up lagi, stay healthy, and stay low-carb.